أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم My dear respected brothers and sisters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Alhamdulillah Inna lillahi na'maluhu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'gfiru wa nashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh My beloved brothers and sisters we are indeed in very turbulent times very dynamic and fluid times as the situation with regards to the COVID-19 coronavirus continues to evolve and we're all um, learning as we go and trying to adapt in terms of implementing policies and uh, plans that uh, we might have in effect. It is indeed good to see everyone here today and I began by saying Alhamdulillah and praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but it is important that we, we do remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of the blessings that He has bestowed upon us. He has helped to protect us, keep us healthy, and we pray that He continues to do so during this time where there is a potential continued spread for this virus. So we pray that He protects us and keeps our family safe and keeps our community safe and healthy. I mean, um, as I mentioned, it's a very fluid situation, so we are implementing a few things uh, here at Majid Sadiq uh, in terms of when you're coming in, you might have noticed the brother at the door with the sanitizers. We're asking everyone to please make wudu at home before they come. Uh, you can bring a, a personal prayer rug um, and other steps to minimize contact. Uh, also, I know we are Muslims and we are accustomed to shaking hands and embracing and greeting our brothers and our sisters. We're asking for the short-term period to maybe refrain from some of these things. I know it's instinctive, and I hope, uh, you know, as brothers and sisters, we don't take offense to this uh, during this uh, short period. Uh, and there's always uh, reminders, and as I said, uh, things are very fluid and changing. So if you are not subscribed to our email or on our social media channels or our robocalls, you can go to our website, you can submit your, your emails there, or you can uh, send us an email or, or a text or something on WhatsApp, and inshallah we will be able to communicate with you and keep you posted of the uh, latest updates and developments. Uh, also, just want to let everybody know, since uh, earlier in the week, uh, last week, we, Sunday, we started implementing a, clean, a cleaning policy, so throughout the entire week here at the masjid, we have been sanitizing and cleaning some of the more frequently touched areas, light switch doorknobs, uh, things of that nature to keep our, ourselves protected. We again encourage anyone who is elderly, who has underlying health conditions, if you're sick and not feeling well, refrain from coming to the masjid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for your intention and grant you barakah from that inshallah and we pray that he grants shifa. Um, just a couple of updates in terms of events. Uh, at the Masjid, we had a youth workshop uh, scheduled for tomorrow and a sister's event on Sunday. Those have both been canceled and will be rescheduled to a later date. So please stay uh, in contact with us. The Quran class remains open. That's uh, Tuesday to Friday. The students from the Quran class and their parents are going to be in contact with the, the Maulana uh, Farzan, who is teaching the class and will be decided uh, between them in terms of continuing or not. Our Saturday Madrasa, uh, tomorrow we are asking students to please present themselves tomorrow for the Madrasa, so come out tomorrow for the Madrasa. Uh, tomorrow the students will be given packets, packages uh, for the younger students and for the older students' instructions. The remainder of the month the Madrasa will be closed in terms of physically here at the Masjid, but we're going to have some remote learning inshallah for the kids so we are asking kids to come tomorrow to get instructions on on how to participate in the madrasa for the rest of the month inshallah 
Uh, lastly, uh, our uh, takeout dinner was scheduled, uh, or is scheduled for March 29th, uh, given that it's a, a, a delivery system, it's not a dinner that's here at the masjid. We are going to uh, proceed at this time, so more information is coming on, on that event, inshallah. Um, and I ask, last but not least, to remember all of those that are sick. Uh, we pray for them and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them shifa. Uh, please turn off and put away your cell phones. And our khatib today is our Imam Maulana Farzan. Asalaamu Alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. Hayya ala salam. Hayya ala salam. Hayya ala falam. Hayya ala falam. Akbar Allah, Akbar, La ilaha illallah. Alhamdulillah. الحمد لله الأكرم الذي خلق الإنسان وكرم وعلمه من البيان ما لم يعلم فسبحان الذي لا يحصى امتنانه لا باللسان ولا بالقلم فأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في محكم التنزيل وهو أزدق القائلين ولنبلونكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع ونقص من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات وبشر الصابرين الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال لا عدوى فقام أعرابي فقال أرأيت الإبل تكون في رمال أمثال الذبا فيأتيها أبعير الأجرب فتجربه فقال عليه الصلاة والسلام فمن أعد الأول أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين وشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين أما بعد Respected brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We started off praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves praises on every situation and every condition. Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal fi khayrin ma kan wa fi sharrin ma kan and whatever good there is and whatever evil there is. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he deserves of all praises. Today's khutbah we will try not to lengthen it and have, have it delivered in a long time time frame but we shorten it and summarize what as Muslims 
What steps should we be taking? Living in this society, living in a community where we have been afflicted with this COVID-19 or the coronavirus. So the khutbah today will be based regarding points as Muslims, we ourselves were enlightened our thought, teachings of Al-Islam from since Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 1400 plus years ago that we have forgotten and we have put it behind of us that today at a time of such calamity we have to be reminded about it. Let us go back to what the virus or what we know about the virus. We know we have the CDC or we have the WHO, the World Health Organization, that have been monitoring it from day one. Last night I took upon myself to carry out a bit of investigation to find out that many a time, because we were here in America, we were here in New York, we heard about the virus when it first started in China in December. But as Muslims, a sad reality among us is that we like to procrastinate. We delay things or we wait until things become severe. And not only as Muslims, this is what exactly the world took. That is why now the virus is spreading across the world. This is why it is given us such a big backlash in other parts out of China. So I managed to find last night some figures that was given by the World Health Organization, which was issued on January 21st of this year, 2020. At that time, they had recorded a case in China to be that of 79,000 plus, 79,257. And a death, to, a death total of 2,835. And at that time, globally, there were only a number of 85,702 affected, globally. We all know this figure is not as it is now. Currently, globally, as of this morning, there were approximately 132 cases recorded globally. So yes, without a doubt, we know that it's spreading. But the point I would like to show as of this morning also, even though it spread so much, China only had approximately 81,000 cases. From January 21st to March 12th, they only had approximately 81 cases, 81,000. So from 79,000, they only increased to 81,000. All the other increase was across the world, global countries, across the world that were not paying heed to when this calamity break out. Because the first comment people made, you know, there was SARS, everyone made the same comment. There were Ebola, everyone made the same comment. There was swine flu, everyone made the same comment. But nothing reached us. And out of China, currently, they, it raised approximately 44,000 from that said date of January 21st to the month of March 11, 12, approximately 44,000. And we have a total of 6,300 deaths, and this is out of China. And this has surpassed the death toll in China. Because to this day, the death toll in China has only reached 3,173. And it's increasing, but it's not increasing as much as the outside world. And the reason for this is because humankind, we procrastinated, and we did not take steps and measures to prevent ourselves. A very famous English statement, we say prevention is better than cure. But how many of us do we practice on it? This is why when we look into the lesson and the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as Muslims, it is our obligatory to follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We saw the lessons and the advice that he had given us. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first he mentioned in the Quran, قُلْ لَنْ يُصِيبُنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ that advise him, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell them that nothing will afflict you, you will not be afflicted except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for us. He is our protector, and in Allah shall the believers lay the trust. The believer, believers shall put the trust only in Allah. From here, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling him to address the mankind, to teach them about the aqeedah and their belief. That yes, we know we've been afflicted with a calamity. Obviously, for us, we put our trust in Allah. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not afflict us except with something that He has decreed for us. 
But that is why as Muslims we still take steps because of this world that we're living in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created a world which we refer to in Arabic as Darul Asbab of apparent and causes where there is effect and reasons and means that we utilize in this world. And as the highlights I'll be given and showing, which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, we will see that in one of the advice regarding taking our steps. So as Muslim, first and foremost, we correct our belief and our aqidah, our conviction that every virus, every sickness, any calamity, any epidemic, is only from the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it will not spread on its own, it will not spread by itself, it will only spread by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the hadith I recited in the Arabic at the beginning, an incident that took place when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood up and he was addressing the companions, he said, La adwa, which means that there is no transitive disease, there is no transmitted disease. So one of the Bedouin stood up, Faqama Arabi and Faqal. So the Bedouin, the desert Arab stood up and he asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al ibl takunu fi rimali amsal al diba? Don't you see how camels, they are in the sand and they look like deer? Fayati al ba'ir al ajrab fatajrabu. But when a camel with scabies mixes with them, they all get afflicted with scabies. All of the camels get afflicted. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in reply to this question by the Bedouin, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa asked him, فَمَنْ أَعْدَ awwal, Who caused the disease of scabies to be on the first camel? It had to start from somewhere. Yes, the apparent cause and effect is there in this world. That is why it spread from one to another. Similarly, as this virus is spreading, it is spreading from one to another. Speculation is here regarding to how the virus started. That is say it started from animal and it spread from an animal to animal and then from the animal it spread it to mankind, to humans and they say it happened in the open market, in the food markets of Wuhan, China. But today, because of still researchers are still studying to find the reason of where they started from. Today even here in America, they're finding cases that people had no connection with animals or people had no connection with those that come from China. So it's transmitted even from humans to humans. And that is what they agreed upon at least today for so far for the research that they understand that this virus is spreading from human to human itself. So yes, as Muslim, let us not forget to correct our beliefs. This is a test of our Iman as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that to us believers, the Muslim think that they will recite and say that I believe in Allah and they will not be tested. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in other parts of the Quran addressed us and reminded us of various forms of testing us. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wala nabluwanna kum bi shay'i min al khawf, that we will test you with forms of fear. And this is what the whole public, the whole Muslim community, the whole world is ha having right now fear. Wala nabluwanna kum bi shay'i min al khawf, wal ju' and hunger. وَنَقْسِمْ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ And a decrease of wealth, life, and provisions. We see that's happening also. We're having debt. Last night while I was speaking to some brothers, I was informed that going to the store, there was restriction on certain things to buy, purchase, regards to sanitation, um, the sanitizers, disinfectants. There's restriction on the stores. So we're having a decrease. When someone will go probably and do a monthly shopping and buy five, six of a disinfectant wipe, now they cannot be able to get that. They will only be able to allow one or two. So we already have in a form of decrease. So these are two of the tests that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed upon the ummah at large right now. And this is the test of our iman. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the ending of the ayah, he addressed us and he reminded us. And glad tidings to those who endure patience. And how they endure patience. الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ When a calamity afflicts them and befalls upon them, they realize and they remember and they remind themselves that from Allah we came and to Him we shall return. The purpose of saying this statement is to remind ourselves that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control of everything. So it's correcting our belief. 
just to limit it due to our time. So the next point I would like to focus on, which Islam also encourages us and reminds us, is that of traveling. We heard, we heard of this word quarantine a lot of times. It is something that Islam has taught us. It is something that Rasulullah taught us. So it is not because of the government or the masjid want to put restrictions on anyone, but this is what Islam taught us. Islam is a way of life that every aspect of our life from the, day, from the time we get up in the morning until we go to sleep at the night, it's laid out for us, the rules and regulations are there for us. It is just if we as Muslims want to take, make that effort into putting our life into that practical aspect of Islam. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in the hadith, إِذَا سَمِئْتُمْ اِتْتَعُونَ بِأَرْدٍ فَلَا تَدْخُلُوهَا وَإِذَا وَقَعَ بِأَرْدٍ وَأَنْتُمْ بِهَا فَلَا تَخْرُجُوا مِنْهُ that if whenever one of you hears of a calamity or a plague that befalls some people or in a land, do not enter that land. And if you are in a land that a calamity or a plague befalls, then do not leave that place which you are in. And this hadith emphasizes the fact of having quarantine. Yes, the, ima, uh, the president, Brother Ayah, made an announcement you know, about sickly or elderly brothers. Why? He put those two categories. It can go for each and every one of us, but due to the high risk of those two categories. Because in fact, with this hadith, it advised as Muslims, if we are fearful or if we know we may have some symptoms, or we know we are afflicted with such a calamity, or we know that such a calamity has befallen the Muslim ummah or the community at large, we have to take our steps. This is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa advised us. In the time of Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu, during his, his khilafah, his ruling was one of the time when one of the largest plague broke out on the Muslim community at large. He was heading towards Syria when a plague had broken out in Syria. Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu had no idea. Before he reached to Syria, when he was resting at one place when he camped with his army, the Muslim that was more in connection to Syria, came and met with him and they informed him of this such and such situation that happened. So you should turn back and go back towards Medina. And we all know who was Umar one who was. He was not one to give up on something. He said, he made mashura with his companions. He first turned towards the, those who were the Muhajireen. He made mashura with them. He turned towards those who were the Ansar from Medina. He made mashura with them. He turned to those who were outside, who were not living in any one of those community, and he made mashura with them. And one of the mashura he was given, that, O Amir al-Mu'mineen, you are step foot with this intention, do not return back until you complete your task. And then he was advised, as Abdullah bin, as Umar radiallahu was advised, and he was told, this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that when you hear of a plague befalling a community, do not enter it. And after hearing that, as Umar radiallahu turned back his army and they marched back towards Medina. So it is a fact, it's a reality of life that yes, these are aspects and Islamic guidelines that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us. And one of the most important aspects is that of tahara. Islam teaches us of tahara, cleanliness. at tuhuru nisful iman, at tuhuru shatrul iman. Tahara is half of iman. Now, the CDC and the WHO are giving us instructions. When we cough, if we were to sneeze, we cover our mouth, we put our hand by our, by our elbow. These are all instructions they've given us. Look at Rasulullah wasallam advice, the manners that Rasulullah wasallam taught us. An Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qala anna nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana idha atasa gatta wajhahu biyadihi aw bithawbihi. Manners of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again. Whenever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would sneeze, he would cover his mouth with his hand or with his cloth, with a piece of cloth. This was the manners of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, teaching us as Muslims tahara, cleanliness, to avoid spreading of germs, avoid spreading of any bacteria. And with regards to our virus that we have going around, the COVID-19, avoid spreading of the virus. Regards to this disinfectants, Islam has also enlightened us about this. We may be using disinfectant spray, we use disinfectant to wipe our hands, to wash our hands, 
All of these aspects Islam enlighten on us. And the coronavirus, it has been classified as an inborn disease. And obviously, with regards to this, which I'll mention of Islam enlighten us, is preventing and uh, is disinfecting the air with a certain disinfectant, and that is a form of also help to prevent airborne disease. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned. تَبَخَّرُوا فِي بُيُوتِكُمْ بِالْلُّبَانِ وَالْمُرِّ وَالسَّعْرَةِ That fumigate your home with luban, mur, and sa'atar. These three things were some form of grass and plants that they used to utilize in the Arab. That they used to utilize and they used to light it or spray it with whichever form they used to have it or burn it. And they used to have the air fumigate. And this luban... It's a, type, it's a type of resin from a tree and it is extracted and people utilize even until this day in the Middle Eastern countries, in parts of Europe, you find aspect of this luban that is still utilizing. A man came to Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhu one day and asked him, in fact he complained to him that he was having problem with his memory. Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhu told him, make use of this luban. For barely it strengthens the heart and it enhances the memory. So it is something that helps and enlightens Muslim, disinfect it, uh, disinfect a Muslim from any form of harm, whatever it is from this virus, whatever it is any form of deficiency in the body. So disinfectant in whatever form we use it is helpful towards the human body. Last two points before I close is one that we should not discriminate people who are afflicted with this disease. Those who are infected or being affected with this disease, as Muslims, we should not criticize, we should not discriminate, we should not belittle them. Because from the character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لَمْ يَكُنْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَاحِشًا وَلَا مُتَفَحِشًا وَلَكِنْ كَانَ يَقُولُ إِنَّ مِنْ خِيَارُكُمْ أَحْسَنُكُمْ أَخْلَاقًا Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not one who used to swear or who used to criticize people, who used to abuse people. But Rasulullah used to say, the best among you is that, is that one who has the best character. So let us earn as Muslim, let us take from this a lesson that we have to turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is our time as Muslim. We are not the researchers, we are not the medical personnel that is doing research to find a cure for this disease or find a way to prevent this disease. So what we can do as Muslim is our part is that we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Abundantly, we should make a stick part to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Nuh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was reminding us of what he advised Nuh alayhi salam to tell to his people, Istaghfiru rabbakum innahu kana ghaffara, yursili samaa alaykum mirarara, wa yumdidkum bi amwali wa banina wa yaj'al lakum anhara. That supplicate to Allah, make a stick part to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask Allah for forgiveness. Because asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does, he changed every negative effect into a positive effect. Every negative situation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed into a positive situation. The ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when you supplicate, when you make istighfar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sent abundance and rain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increased in wealth, He increased in progeny, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant for you gardens, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant rivers to flow for you. These are from the essence and from the Virtues that when one does istighfar, seeking forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them in this world of this aspect. So I pray and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he, he make us to understand and take precaution as we can as Muslim. Let us turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dreadful time and let us remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every aspect of our life, whether it's a difficult time or whether it's a time of ease. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I pray and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove this calamity that has befallen the ummah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us from getting affected with this calamity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard the Muslims across the world and the entire ummah at large. Aqulu ma tasma'oon wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'i wa muslimin. إِنَّ الْحَمْدَ لِلَّهِ نَحْمَدُهُ وَنَسْتَعِينُهُ وَنَسْتَكْفِرُهُ وَنُؤْمِنُ بِهِ وَنَتَوَكَّلُ عَلَيْهِ وَنَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ شُرُورِ أَنْفُسِنَا وَمِنْ سَيَّاتِ أَعْمَالِنَا مَنْ يَهْدِهِ اللَّهُ فَلَا مُضِلَّ لَهُ وَمَنْ يُضْلِلْهُ فَلَا هَادِيَ لَهُ 
وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فيا عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي أولا بتقوى الله تعالى وطاعته ومن يتق الله ورسوله فأولئك هم الفائزون وأحذركم عن عصيان الله ومعصية رسوله ومن يعص الله ورسوله فأولئك هم الخاسرون وعليكم بالجماعة فإن يد الله مع الجماعة فقال تعالى فيه واعتصموا بحبل الله جميعا ولا تفرقوا أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام من صلى علي واحدة صلى الله بعشرة اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام ألحم أمتي بأمتي أبو بكر وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر وأصدقهم حياء عثمان وأقضاهم علي وفاطمة سيدة النساء أهل الجنة والحسن والحسين سيدة أشباب أهل الجنة وحمزة أسد الله وأسد رسوله اللهم اغفر العباس وولده مغفرة ظاهرة وباطنة لا تغادي ذنبا ودوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين وأن كل صحابة الباقين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين الله الله في أصحابي لا تتخذهم غورا من بعدي فمن أحبهم فبحبي أحبهم ومن أبغضهم فببغضي أبغضهم وخير أمتي قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله العلي الذي يذكركم وادعوه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر قوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر